first applet we're going to take a look at is an addition applet stored as applet ID number one in the example applets. And it's an addition of two three-digit numbers with draggable numbers. So one neat thing is I can uh, drag these into place to represent values, and I can actually use them to represent the regrouping numbers as well. And as I work my way through the problem, 1 plus 8 is 9, plus another 9 is 18, I can represent the whole value in the drag two boxes. And if it's represented correctly, when I press the done bit button, it should disappear. And just to show you that the values are not static, I'm going to reload it. That one was 854 plus 997. Let's load another example one. And here we have 2 plus 2 is 4. 6 plus 3 is 9. And 6 plus 6 is 12. So 1,294 is the answer. All right, let's build a math applet. So I'm going to start by going into build mode, and the first thing I'm going to do is put my instructions down. So I'm going to start with a text area. It's left aligned. I'm going to add a word wrap to it, 300, and then I'm going to type my instructions. Once I've done that, I can drag it into place. I'm going to put it over here near the left side of the screen. And then I'm going to start on my random numbers. The first random number, like the second random number, is going to be a three-digit number. So I'm going to set the number floor to zero and the number ceiling to 999. When I do that, I'll get an example of one. This won't be the value necessarily that comes up in the applet. It could be any number that's three digits. I'm going to do the same thing with a second random number and drag that one into place below the first. Next step is to add the line and operation sign. And I'm doing those with text areas. And the operation sign, the plus symbol, isn't going to go exactly where I want it. So I'm going to float it by using the shift key and that allows me to put it where it looks right to me. Once I've done that, I'm going to add the drag two boxes. I'm going to set them to the normal scale, which is 0.5. and I'm going to drag them in from right to left. So starting in the ones place to the tens place to the hundreds place. I'm going to take a little detour add a comma, and that'll snap right into place. And finally, a drag two box for the thousands place. Once that's done, I want to add my draggable numbers so I have something to put in the drag two boxes. And here's the draggable number uh, item right here. I'm going to set that to vertical. And then I'm going to set it to clonable, which means that I can make multiple copies of the numbers by clicking on them, rather than just having one of each. And when I line that up, I'm happy with it. I'm going to move on to the second set of instructions. I want a smaller red set of instructions above the problem to remind the user to use those draggable numbers for regrouping numbers. So I'm going to type. type the instructions in. I'm going to set the color to red, the size to 12, the alignment to center, and we'll do a word wrap of 250. And when that's done, I can just kind of grab it, drag it to where it looks right to me. Looks good there. And uh, I'm going to add my um, done button, which will be needed to finish the problem. Looks cozy right there. I'm going to develop my done statement. So I have two random numbers here stored in an array. One is at zero, and one oops, is at one. There they are, 974 plus 626. So I can just type that expression, and I'll get the full value, or the answer. So if I use this other function called value drag two boxes, 
and a conditional equal statement, I'll get a false. Now, right now it's false because I haven't dragged the actual values into the drag to box. But once the user does, that'll show as true. So I'm going to copy that into my clipboard before I add a box. I'm just going to drag a box by holding down B. And when I'm done, I let go of B. That looks about right to me. Uh, and then I'll press P to print. When I do that, I'm given the option to assign the applet ID. I'll assign it to number one. And then I'll paste in the new done test over this default. And when I do that, I get code that comes up. This will be what I'll copy into the mages applet file in order to run the applet. Let's take a look at the next applet, which is applet ID number 27, the bar graph applet, and it says which teacher's class collected the most cans of all. You can see the bar graph is called cans collected, and we have the number of cans running along the y-axis with various teacher's names running along the x-axis. In this case, the right answer is Henderson, but you can see we can select the wrong answer, and when we click on the done button, Nothing happens. When we click Henderson, though, the Done button disappears. And you can see the values on this bar graph are not static. If I reload the applet, it's taking an unusually long time. Load up 27. Well, I actually got the same answer. Different values for the other bars, though. We'll do it one more time. Well, Henderson is doing really well today. Let's try it one more time. Proof of the power of random numbers. And we get a new right answer and read. OK, let's build a simple bar graph applet. So I'm going to select the bar graph item from the menu start typing in my values. I'll make the title cans collected. I'm going to make the numbered access label be cans and I'm going to have a range of 0 to 300 with an interval of 50 on that axis. I'll label the other axis as class. And I'm going to put five teachers names on that axis. So here I'll type the teacher's names. I'm going to leave the value as the default. That will just be a random number along the range of the graph. Once I'm done, I've got the bar graph here. I can sort of center it in the middle of the screen, and I can see that Dreyfus has collected the most. That's actually going to be the question for this applet. So I'll type that in now using a text area. I'm going to set that font size down to 24. And then just kind of move it into place. Now I'm going to start building up my multiple choice statements. I'm going to use the bar graph object, and I'm going to use this function called top spot. It tells me that my top spot is the first position of the array, Dreyfus. And I can actually use that to pull the proper name from the bar graph item list. So that's an array containing all the names. If I use bar graph top spot as the index, that'll grab the winning name. If I want to grab something that's not the winning name, I can do that sort of similarly. I'm going to use this function get random int excluding. I'm going to Use 0 and 4 is the range, because that's appropriate for the array. And then I'll use bar graph top spot as the last argument. 
When I do that, it gives me everything but the right answer. So I can use those two statements to set my multiple choice. So when I add a multiple choice, I'm going to leave that to the default. And the correct answer expression will be that expression that pointed to the name Dreyfus. Then I can use the expression that pointed to the wrong answer for all three wrong answers. One, two, and another. Once that's done, I'm going to set my font size. I'm going to match the font size of the question, 24. Give it a little bit of room, because these are words. And I'll give it a little bit more vertical space. And I can pull my answers into place. Get them where I think they look about right. I still do need a done button. I'll drag that into place as well. I'm going to put a couple of boxes around my two areas in the applet. So there's one. And I'll add another just below that, a little bit wider. And once I'm happy with it, I'm going to press the P button to print. I'll type in the new applet ID, which in this case is 27. And I can leave my done chest test to the default, because that'll work for any multiple choice answer. When I hit save, I get the code to add to the mages applet file. Okay, let's take a look at applet 28, which is a mix number and number line applet. And we're told to drag the dots to the numbers indicated. The first is two and four fourths, or three. And I'm going to drag that dot. And what you'll see is the dot actually snaps to the line and snaps along it. So I can get it to place accurately. Once it's there, I'm going to drag the second dot to 2 and 1 fourth. And it drags in as well. If I don't have it in the right spot, the done statement doesn't evaluate. But if I do, the done statement disappears. If I reload, I get two different values to represent on the number line. All right, we're going to make an applet with a number line involving mixed numbers. So I'm going to build the number line first. The number line's orientation is going to be horizontal. I'm going to have it be a little wider. Uh, we'll have the minimum value be 0, and we'll leave the label on. We'll have the maximum label be 10, leave that label on. Uh, we'll have the interval be 1. We will label all of the numbers in the, throughout the number line. And then we'll subdivide it by 4, which will be the denominator we're using. We'll have two dots, and those dots will not be static. The dot orientation is going to be horizontal. We'll leave a label on the dot, and we'll make sure the dots do snap to line. When we're done. We get the number line object and the movable dots. Okay, I'm going to move my dots over to a location that looks about right to me. I can always move it later. Put my number line, get everything adjusted about right. And I'm going to start adding my instructions. So the instructions are going to be to drag the dots to the numbers indicated. So I'll grab a text area. I'll type that in. And then I'll set the color of that to black, leave that the same. But the size will be 24. Uh, we won't need a word wrap or any of this other stuff. We can put that up here pretty high and out of the way. Let's build the mixed numbers. And so I'm going to build a random mixed number. I'm going to set the whole number floor from 0 all the way up to 9. I'll set the numerator floor from 1 to 4. And I'll constrain the denominator to always be 4. 
I'm going to change the color to the first color in the rainbow, red. I'll leave the size at 72. I'm done. I get a mixed number. I'm going to do a similar thing to build a second mixed number. Again, 0 to 9 for my whole number. My numerator can be anything from 1 to 4, but my denominator needs to be only 4. And I'm going to use the next color in the rainbow, orange. Size is 72. Now we need to add a little bit more text just to make it really clear which one we're supposed to drag. So I'm going to add a bit of red text to label this one. I'll set it to 24. There we go. And let's add a bit of yellow text, orange rather, to label that one. I'm pretty happy with that. Let's add the done button. Let's start working on the done state. Now, I have a number line object, and it has a thing called dot value, and that's what I'm interested in. The dot value is going to hold what the user has dragged the dot to on the number line. In this case, if they've dragged A, it's going to be at the 0 index, and if they've dragged B, it's going to be at the 1 index. Let's worry about A first. We want A to represent the value of the mixed number. So I'm going to grab the random mixed number object, and I'm going to use its whole number. which is 6. I can add each of the parts of the fraction together, or in this case, evaluate the value of the fraction by adding the whole number plus the fractional part, or the numerator divided by the denominator to get the value of the fraction. If I use that original dot value, and it is equal, I can build up half of my done statement. Now it's only half of my done statement because I need to evaluate the other dot as well. So I'm going to use a double ampersand and copy this information over, but in this case, Edit all the, the zeros after the double ampersand to be 1. That way we're representing the second index of the array. Now that's still going to show false, but that's because nothing's been dragged in. I'm going to grab my done statement. I'm going to put a box over this. And then I should be ready to print. The applet ID is 28. And the done test is pretty long, but it's in there. When I save, I get the code necessary to copy into the mages applet file.